previously on how to make everything. Should have alcohol in it and should be able to distill it out. Oh, that's some strong stuff. Got a mess to clean up. In this episode, I'm putting my chemistry and mineral hunting abilities to the test, and I will try to produce a wide variety of cleaning products from scratch to attempt to clean and cover up some of the most extreme of all messes, a crime scene. Along the way, I'll get some advice from the people who do this professionally, and then put my cleaning job to the test. And this is the one question I'm sure many of us have pondered, could I get away with murder? My name is Andy, and this is how to make everything. First up, I'm with professional crime scene cleaner, Jen of Scene Clean. We do biohazard remediation. So we clean up after death and medical emergencies, unattended death, blood spills, crime, extreme hoarding cases, stuff like that. So how do you get into a field like this? So we got into it actually because Nate was a paramedic. So he saw the scenes as they were happening, unfolding, and then wondered what happened afterwards. What might people not expect about this business? I think it's as interesting as you think it would be, but I don't think it's as you know, compelling. During the process of a clean out, there are days or, or weeks where we're cleaning and it's not all super interesting. You know, it's mm -hmm. not all CSI, yeah. you know, cool stuff. How many days does it usually take to clean out site? So it could be weeks, a crime scene, usually within days it's remediated. What would you say your most common type of cleanup is? I think our most common is decomp. If someone dies and it's not discovered until later that day, it's not a huge deal. But if they die and it's not discovered until later that month or later mm -hmm. that year, there's problems that come with that. What would you say the worst job you can get is? Anything that has poop in it. <laughs> so I can handle blood, eyeballs, brains, all that stuff. We had one that was a, uh, we called Poop Mountain because it, <laughs> the guy kept pooping in the toilet without, I don't know if you, can, if you guys want to use this info, but <laughs> into a mountain. So he wow. didn't blush. It was, it was like a really gross ice cream soft serve. So oh. that, <laughs> Not a fan of the poop. <laughs> was it toilet broken or he just? I don't think it was broken. I think that was just something he started and he kind of ran with it. But uh -huh. um, everybody's got to have a hobby. Yeah, everyone, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a new one. What is the most difficult thing to clean up? It's not blood, cat pee. It crystallizes. You have to use special enzymes on it. If it gets into cracks or carpeting, it's almost you know impossible to ever completely remediate. There's blood splattered. Usually, just remove it. You know, a little more time consuming. If it dries on a wall, then you know there's steps to cleaning that up, and it's still fresh. That's easier. So, like a blood spray on a wall, for instance, would need like a multi-step process. For instance, if it was you know a gun that was used that created the splatter, mm -hmm. um, it's probably mixed with other things, skull fragments hair in walls, brain, mm -hmm. uh, fat, that stuff's harder than the actual blood itself. So we have degreasers, we have sanitizing products, we have products that we call indicators that show us whether or not there's blood still remaining or not. And if there is, it reacts to the blood and shows us where it still is. Sometimes it's not what you want to hear. You know, it's like you think you've done it. Yeah. And it looks pretty good, but you know, you spray it and you're like, well, there's something still there. Uh, my favorite part of the job is working with the clients, working with them and comforting them during a difficult time. It's an industry where you're working with people who are pretty much dealing with mental illness or trauma you know one of the two is is factoring in somewhere and I feel like that's something that I'm good at and that I hope to help people with so a lot of the cleaning solutions you use are pretty complex not stuff you buy at the store for cleaning your house the stuff that we buy um, is professional grade yeah. yeah you can't just go in there with like a mop and a pine saw and go to town I wouldn't want to try to make my own thanks yeah. again to Jen for explaining to us how they do their job we had a hard time cutting down her fascinating interview so to catch the extended version of it check out the latest episode of our podcast Simply Complex, where we explore the extra details of this profession of theirs. Now, let's make some cleaners. The first cleaner I'll be collecting is an abrasive base cleaner from a site, from an abandoned mine in California. But 
First, I had to navigate some pretty rough roads to reach the destination, and then a hike to try and find this mine. I tried to get to this mine by uh, Google Maps, sent us way down there as like the closest road. So we hiked it up and we got about to the edge of the cliff. So all we had to do was climb this 500 foot cliff here and uh, we did it, we made it. it was, uh, we didn't get any footage of the climb, but we made it. And it's sunny again and it's not, not almost dark. Oh, don't, don't show the car, don't show the car. Looked at the map again and uh, realized there's a back road that's not well known, but it leads directly up to here. So we drove up, made it up to the old Dutch cleanser mine. It's a uh, mine of pumice stone. Uh, sometimes pumice? Pumice stone. It's a mine full of pumice, pumice, something like that. The volcanic rock, and see, has a variety of uses uh, from. Uh... All right, so I'm gonna go check out the mine collect some uh, pumice and uh, make a household cleaner out of it. It's a little scary in here because it's just like a 45 degree angle dipping down into complete darkness. No idea how deep that goes. Just full of a bunch of really loose gravel. One wrong step and bottomless pit. Let's go explore. <laughs> I'm going to my dark place. The good stuff's gotta be down there. Why else would they dig that deep? I think that's a tampon. This is a big mine. There, this is the rock I wanted. Don't need glass or charcoal. So I originally heard about this mine. It was described as talc, which uh, supposedly might cause cancer. So I was a little nervous about it, but then I found out it's actually pumice, which uh, to my knowledge doesn't cause cancer. Probably everything I work with causes cancer. I'm probably gonna die soon. But I got some pumice. Let's get out of here or aggravate the cancer. Such a beautiful view. But unfortunately I realized there was one more witness I forgot to take care of. <laughs> Not far from this mine is where I previously collected another cleaning detergent, borax. Like many cleaners, borax is alkaline, which helps it break down grease, dirt, and soil. Reason why boron compounds work good in soap products is a mild hydrogen peroxide or so. Yeah, you're actually getting a peroxide bleaching that took place from the borax. Another alkaline compound I previously made from other projects is baking soda, which I produced from the brine I collected in Wyoming. Next, on the opposite side of the pH spectrum, let's produce some acids. They can be useful for dissolving inorganic deposits like scaling or deposits of rust. First up, another compound I previously made is vinegar. Simply by letting some apples ferment in natural bacteria to produce the acetic acid. Now to extract one more natural acid, this time from rhubarb. I'm gonna make a compound called oxalic acid, which is a common clean product used in a lot of different things. It's especially good on rust and stainless steel. A few different plants contain it, and one of them is rhubarb. It's actually one of the components in rhubarb that makes it toxic, although you have to eat a lot of it to get a toxic amount. Collected some rhubarb from my garden this summer, so I'm just gonna grind these up, soak it out in the water, and then chemically separate it. Oh, kinda of satisfying. <laughs> Feel cleaner already. This is let it boil for a while. Extract all that oxalic acid. Now just drain up the solid matter. Smells like tea. Fifty percent of this series is always just me straining stuff. Now that I have all the solid matter strained out. Next step, I'm going to neutralize it with some calcium chloride, and this should precipitate out as a salt, which I'll then strain and extract, then reacidify with some dilute sulfuric acid, and then we should be left with the oxalic acid. Oxalic acid. And now we wait.
Then I boiled off excess water so I could dilute it to my preferred strength. So next I'm gonna produce two compounds, bleach and lye. I've actually kind of stumbled into how to do this before when I was making sulfuric acid. And for it, I'm gonna take some salt we collected in Utah. I'm gonna dissolve it, produce solution of brine, connect them with a salt bridge, run electricity through them. And one beaker should produce bleach and the other one should produce lye. Left to run overnight, the end result is two compounds, an alkaline lye and an acidic hyperchlorous acid. It's worth pointing out that this is a different compound than most store-bought bleaches, which are commonly alkaline, but they both yield the same bleaching and disinfectant results. Next up, let's make a solvent cleaner, acetone. As a solvent cleaner, it's able to dissolve some compounds the water can't, including masses like ink and marker stains. Back last summer when I was making sunscreen, I started the process of making acetone for use in a chemical sunscreen that I had planned that used a compound found in almonds. But after running into some Roblox, I ended up dropping that portion and only got halfway through the acetone production. Fermenting some acetic acid, kind of poured some out and stringing it here. And I have calcium carbonate made from calcite, ground up, and I'm gonna react the two. The byproduct of it is carbon dioxide. That means it's reacting. The calcium acetate will dissolve in the water while any excess calcium carbonate will precipitate out. So I'll filter that out next and then evaporate it to form out calcium acetate. All right, so now I have the calcium acetate that I produced earlier this year when I was originally doing a failed attempt at making sunscreen, and now it's over six months later. The studio has changed a little bit, but I'm ready to complete this and actually make my acetone. Now that I have the calcium acetate, just gotta dry distill it in this distillation. The acetone should decompose out of it, distill out, and I should have my final acetone in here. Let's give it a shot. After distilling it twice, I should be left with a fairly pure acetone. To test its purity, let's see if it burns. Lastly, one more compound, the cause and solution to a lot of life's problems. Alcohol, which I previously fermented and then distilled a few different times from apples, wheat, and even crabgrass. Ethanol is both another solvent cleaner, but it's also a disinfectant when it's over 70% concentration. Let's mix up all my cleaners to the necessary concentrations and head back to the crime scene. Let's do this. Back at the scene of the crime here, I went through and removed all the trash, sprayed everything down to get rid of the major stuff, and then vacuumed as much as I could. Now it's time to actually try out the cleaning products and see how well I can get this place to be actually clean. We have a variety of different solutions that I've been able to produce, and we have a variety of different problems to actually take care of. So we have some cat urine, we have some blood stains, a few different chemical spells where the meth lab was, which is some hydrochloric acid, some lye, some motor oil, some permanent marker, scribblings, grease stain on the wall and on the cabinet here. It's a huge mess and it's gonna be a real test of my cleaning solutions to see how well I can destroy all this evidence. As Jenny explained, it's more than just making it visibly clean, it's about the invisible stuff. So we're gonna do a variety of tests afterwards. We use some luminol spray to test for actual blood that can't be seen. We have some Petri dishes, we can take some samples to test how well things have been disinfected, see if we can cover up this whole incident. All right, first up, cat piss. Mmm, some good stuff. Got some vinegar, give that a spray around here. Let's really soak it in. Get some baking soda in there too. Good towels. That might have actually helped a bit. Give everything a nice rinse. All right, I think that's pretty clean. Let's see what happens when it dries. All right, now for the real test, the blood stain. First, I'm gonna try and remove as much excess blood as I can. It's still a little wet. Ugh, it's starting to harden up. <laughs> this is gonna be a challenge. So we got some lime, and we got some bleach. Let's see how well I can get this to come out. So we're supposed to dab. Dab, don't smear. This might be a lost cause, but let's see what we can do. So I got it a little bit lighter. You can see it's actually starting to clean up a bit, um, but there's so much blood in there. And really, she's just cut it out. Really trying to 
get rid of it. So I'm gonna move on to some wider stains and see how well I can actually get those out. A little bit of bleach. Rinse it off a bit more. It's gonna get much better than that. Not looking too promising. Not quite getting it all out. All right, let's get the lie shot now. Got a little stain here. See what happens when it dries. So next up, we got the oxalic acid and acetone. Got the chemical spill here, it's causing the steel to rust a little bit. And then we have some permanent marker on the wall here that uh, doesn't quite wipe off. Let's see if some of the acetone I brewed can fix that. I don't know. It comes off pretty good. That's super great on the blood. Definitely effective on the permanent marker. First, clean up all the nasty chemicals, wipe them up. Oxic acid. It's uh, oxalic acid. That too. Did I'll do anything with the rust here. Ooh, looking pretty good. Pretty clean. Not too bad. Looks like I got all the rust out. Next up, got some ethanol. Spray it on all this gore here to help sanitize it and clean it as much as possible. Not a super effective cleaner. Mostly useful as a disinfectant, so that will be the the real test later. So next, got the pumicite. This is an abrasive cleaner. So got some nice grease here. Some of the powder on there. Start scrubbing. Add a little water first. Pretty tough stuff. It looks pretty good. Let's see what it's like with just water. Uh, kinda comes out. The pumice I helped quite a bit. That's actually pretty effective. Pretty much good as new. Except for the cracks, but we'll ignore that. All right, and then we have the borax. We have a variety of grease and dirt and blood and some of the fabric of those lamps stained. Let's give that a shot. All clean. So successful, I think we're washing the paint off the glass. The crime scene is basically clean. Let's get a few thoughts. So I've now tried out all the individual products on different scenarios and found them to be at least somewhat effective. So next I'm going to divide this crime scene into three sections. Clean one with just water, one with my cleaning compounds, and clean one with store-bought ingredients. You can see which one allows me to get away with murder. Allegedly. Back at the crime scene now, after my attempt at cleaning it up, I was check out and see how well I did. First up with some of the individual tests I did on the ground. All right, first up, we got the cat urine. See if it passes a smell test. I'd say it's better, but it's definitely still there. Discoloration wise, it's still a little off. The baking soda maybe looks a little bit better than the vinegar, but where they both intersected was actually probably the cleanest. It helped but not, not a quick solution. Yeah, one of the most surprising things with seeing clean was how they said the cat urine is probably the hardest thing to clean. I oftentimes, you can't even remove it, even with their special enzymes. <laughs> All right, and then here we have the blood stain. Tried to work on the big one. A little bit too much blood to work with. So that was a bit of a fail. Um, over here, I tried the bleach. I don't know, I might have just smeared it around mostly. It's definitely still there. Same with the lye. Mostly just smeared around, I think. Cleaning carpet is a bit of a challenge. I think oftentimes they would just cut something like this just out when it's this bad. Murdering somebody on carpet is not a good idea. Stick to a hardwood floors. All right, first up, we got the wall here that I washed with water. And I have a Petri dish, basically going to collect any bacteria on here, put it in here, and then let it incubate for a few days, and we'll see how much bacteria are actually still present. And then we have the wall I cleaned with my cleaners. Yep. And here I have the wall that I cleaned with store-bought cleaners. Test that guy out too. Then for control, we have the last wall that I did not touch at all, and collect a sample of that guy. All right. Let these babies incubate for a few days and see what turns out. After being left to grow over the weekend, the control sample has a few obvious spots with microorganism growth. The plate from my water cleaned area looks almost just as bad. However, the store bought and my from scratch cleaners both have almost no visible growth at all. And if anything, my made from scratch cleaners look to be more effective than the store bought ones, possibly because I ended up using several different disinfectants on mine, but only bleach on the store bought side. All right, so next up we have the luminol test, and this reacts with any trace amounts of iron from the blood and will cause it to illuminate in the dark. This is the wall that washes water. Shouldn't be too effective, so we'll see. Put that to the test, see if there's any trace amounts of blood left. So this will react with some forms of bleach. So we'll see how well my homemade bleach and store-bought bleach will actually do and kind of 
covering this up. The whole wall might glow on those. I'm gonna spray it a few times, it'll kill the lights and see if anything glows. Oh, wow. <laughs> Something happened here. So water, it's not quite gonna cut it. it. Leaves a lot of trace. You just got caught. All right, then here's the panel I did with cleaning products that I made myself. See if the blood shows up or if the bleach will show up. It looks like I did a better job, but all the cracks is where all the blood remained. So my cleaner was effective, but uh, didn't get deep enough. I just got caught. Next up, we have the store-bought cleaning products to try that out and see if I can at least get away with murder with those. Interesting. Man, <laughs> how much of that is just the bleach reacting? There's still definitely some streaks of blood. Yeah, I feel like it's a bleach. I'll have to try a control with uh, no blood and just the bleach. See if that gets the same result. Then here's a control where the blood is still on the wall, not cleaned at all. It's the grand nightclub. I got the glow sticks. All right, let's do a control. I'm gonna take a paper towel. Got nothing on it. Spray it with luminol. A little dab of bleach on it. Whoa. <laughs> it lit up. Whoa. That's cool. <laughs> so this is what bleach does. It's like a rave. So let's get one dipped in blood. Stuff's a little dried, but it kind of has a whole halo around it of just a residual blood. So in the end, I got some mixed results. I was able to do some decent cleaning with my products, but not really clean enough to get away with murder itself. So if you're gonna do it, I recommend hiring a professional to clean up afterwards. Or, you know, even better yet, don't murder people. It's my controversial take of the day. Otherwise, you're gonna get caught. So I gotta flee the country soon before the Authorities catch on. So we do a follow-up video showing how we staged this scene and how we got blood everywhere. And uh, unrelated note, we have a new vacancy for an intern. And uh, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.